Birthing is a natural and wonderful process. Um, and for many women, uh, it's a painful, uh, stressful, and yet very empowering experience. Um, however, the more um, medical interventions um, are necessary or delivered, uh, the more is the likelihood that it becomes a complicated or medically um, uh, highly intervening process and is regarded and, and, and um, is becoming more uh, uh, difficult for the woman to, to get through. The interesting piece is, is that we have accumulating now research that yes, all these uh, highly medical complications and let's say pain and hemorrhage and unexpected c-section all of these are highly medical potentially traumatic experiences but they are actually not impacting the woman nor the, the baby if there is a um, safe um, a nurturing environment pr provided by the, by the doctors, by the nurses that can hold the mother and uh, give her information um, and, and provide support during this experience, then actually the mother recovers very well from this experience. And this is what we call negative subjective birth experiences. It's about the subjective experience of that birth that might carry consequences for the mother whether she develops depression or post-traumatic stress disorder after this traumatic birth or whether she heals well and recovers from it but if we are treated dehumanized if we are treated badly if there's no communication if there's maybe even a violent approach to this birth and the woman feels alone and abandoned then there is a subjective experience of negativity and that is superimposed on that medical trauma and that's what carries the weight and creates risk even for the strongest woman to become depressed and post-traumatic in with stress For young children, being exposed to a parent who is um, less able to give positive parenting, to be sensitive, to be um, um, responsive to the child's needs, whether it's physical needs, um, feeding, diaper changing, and providing a safe environment, or emotional needs, giving love and nurture and being positive, because uh, that's very important. Young babies need a lot of positive stimulation. Just being neutral is, is not enough. Babies are hardwired. They need the parents to be singing and talking and, and smiling. And so if a parent can do this because they are depressed or anxious, this child will learn. We call this internalize these negative experiences. So many things get set in place early in life. And as the child grows, it becomes more complex. But the origin of trust, of self-esteem, of feeling good about yourself, feeling competent, and feeling strong and resilient is all set early in childhood. So it's really important that we are not missing the mark. We have to start early. So I, I want to say a little bit about the concept of the ACEs and the ACE study. It was a large study where uh, patients in family medicine uh, were, were interviewed um, and the, the, for, for experiences growing up. Um, they were asked about their experiences um, of um, risk growing up as well as in the, in, the, in the present time. And the reason was because the doctors tried to understand why are these patients not doing well? Why are they physically unhealthy and not feeling well? 
And what they found is that it was not what was going on in the here and now, in the present time, but what happened to them 40, 50 years ago while they were growing up, that that had a high impact to their health as adults. And that's the first time we realized well, it's so important whether you grow up uh, with a lot of stress and adversity or not. And they actually identified 10 factors that were really important growing up. And it's, it's basic things. Do you have enough food where you cared for or where you neglected physically, emotionally? Did you have uh, loving parents or caregivers, grandparents, family? Were you abused physically, sexually, emotionally? Were your parents having problems with alcohol or with uh, violence in the home? All these factors were important. And in fact, they found that many, many uh, of these adults actually had these childhood uh, experiences. 20, 25% had experiences of sexual abuse in the United States. But in fact, we can say uh, on average, women and men as well, but women more than men, have a high likelihood. One out of five, one out of four has maltreatment growing up. And that has an impact to your physical health and your psychological well-being. And now entering parenthood and what many studies showed, and my own included, is it's, in fact, it's not the child abuse that impacts how you parent. It's, but child abuse impacts that you are more likely to develop depression, to develop post-traumatic stress, anxiety, all kinds of symptoms. And if you develop those symptoms, that impacts how you are able to parent. So what is then important is what can we do? What can we do to help? And there are two things we, we can do. One, we can treat depression and anxiety. We can help the parent to be more well. The other thing that we can do is that we can increase the capacity to be, despite all the mental health problems, despite the abuse, that, that you, are, that you be, stay insightful or reflective. And what does that mean? That means that you take the perspective of your baby, that you can put yourself into the shoes of your baby and always see the world and what you do from the side also from the baby. So if you can do this, despite being depressed or despite having trauma, then your baby is protected from all the stresses in the here and now. And we can train, we can help parents to be more insightful through therapeutic interventions. Absolutely any trauma, in particular interpersonal trauma, um, domestic violence um, is, uh, is, has an impact on, on physical and mental health. However, we do understand that the younger you are and the earlier in your brain development trauma happens, the more impact it has on your body and emotional functioning. In fact, we now know that in the first thousand days of a child's life, there is the most development of your brain. The most synapses get formed, the most experiences get encoded in your brain. We learn the most in the first three years of life. So what happened in the first three years of life has a huge impact on your life trajectory. It does not mean that you cannot change, but it does mean that we have to be really particularly aware that when trauma and abuse happens early to a young child, the child is less able to buffer against that because the brain is not yet mature and so much is forming. The later the trauma happens, you might be already stronger to cope with it. It's always negative, 
and we need to do everything to prevent trauma. But the younger you are, the more impact it has.